Are you ready to go? Can I tell you something really quick before you hit this intro? Mm, how much time you got? What do you mean how much time I got? How much time can you get done in? Oh, about six seconds. Oh, okay. I just want to say my room smells incredible right now. And that is thanks to Jake from 20-somethings doing nothing podcast because he sent me. So they're having their candle competition, right? Yes. He sent me their can- his candle. His candle is called Side Parts and Skinny Jeans. It's brunch scented. It's made for millennials. And it smells like heaven. Side Parts Why are you and rolling Skinny your Jeans. Eyes? Side Parts and Skinny Jeans. You know the whole thing where it's like TikTokers were like, we know you're old if you have a side part and you wear skinny jeans. Oh, I was wondering. I've been looking at that candle all week and I had no idea what the purpose of that scent was. John. And it has pink glitter in it. Cute, Jake. It's so cute. I also helped him with things. So anyway, um, I have a question for you on the other side of the intro. So why don't you hit it? Dude, guess what though? What? This is On Air with... Oh, oh geez. I mean, this is Almost On Air with Erica and John. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Almost On Air podcast. My name is John. That's Erica. And Erica, would you like to tell me the second part of the amazing news that you have for me? <laughs> Wait, I have a lot of ama- I have so much to tell you. That's good because we are doing a podcast and this would be the opportunity That's for you to true. do so. Even though we talk um, every day. I also was just laughing because that intro ended and we did not communicate beforehand if you should start or I should start. No, so we you really- never do. We, we just no. kind of look at each other and some days I'm just like, I give you the nod. And then today, mm-hmm. uh, days like today, we just stare at each other. Right. <laughs> and, and then we go with it. Like someone's going to start talking eventually, right? Yeah. Like otherwise... Um, I think that, did I, have I asked you before what you, if you were making a candle of yourself, did we do this on the podcast? We did. Yeah. I think I said like ADHD or something. Oh, right. Okay. Well, I wanted to tell you, because I was going to ask that question again. We are doing a candle competition. No, no. I wanted to tell you that a guy um, that I was speaking with, sorry, I'm adjusting. That's what that sound is. A uh, guy that I had started talking to on Hinge. Oh my God, I'm pulling down oh my wires. God. Things are really bad. Do you love him? Um, He's cute. Oh my but, God, you love him. But he asked me if I was a candle, what candle would I, or like, what would my scent be? And I Wait, was, was this like- this his opening Hinge comment? If you were a candle. No. Because I don't actually hate that either. No, pretty much his opening comment- <laughs> was like obviously there was like something with like a photo right right i don't remember who liked who whatever cool and then his opening thing was what's your favorite scent or what's your favorite smell and he's like and i mean like don't say like oh chicken tenders but like be smell. specific and i said 10 a.m at my lake house because it means we've probably just had breakfast so like the aroma of breakfast is in the air but we're also cracking the first beer and we're heading out onto the dock and we're getting ready I would just like to address the fact that at my lake house makes you sound so bougie. <laughs> like, okay, it's not my lake house. I mean, if you my... said my lake house, I'd be like, I can no longer talk to this woman because... You know what? I said my family's lake house for that reason. Okay. I didn't want to sound... Because it is. It's like our family lake house. So Yeah. Anyway, he really enjoyed that answer, and we have continued to converse. Wait, so how much conversing has been done here? Give me the scoop. Not we much. We him? just started talking yesterday. So okay. Like, this could be gone by tomorrow. Okay. But why is um, he is he the best hinge match we've had so far? Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Do you ever get worried that like hinge matches of yours will listen to your podcast? Yes. I don't <laughs> mention my podcast until like... I feel a little more sure about it. Okay, hold on. So I just want to backtrack just a little bit. When you did your profile, you did not include your last name, correct? I Correct. I think it just says Erica S. Okay. Which you... could be my middle or last name. True. And it's both, coincidentally. Should I put my middle name on there since that's what people could find me on socials by? See, okay, but here's my concern with that is if you put Erica Shea and someone Instagrams mm. Erica Shea, they're going to find you because you They'll stock- find me immediately. They'll find you immediately. And you stock everyone that you match with as much as right. you can usually. So like as soon as they get to your profile, you have almost on air in your bio. You have a podcast. If they match with you, they're going to probably click the most recent one. And now I'm talking to the dude that like enjoys candles. So first of all, what's up, dude? Right, right. Hey, man. Hey, man. What was his um, favorite scent? Oh, my God. <laughs> what, so you're paying remember. great attention. Yeah. <laughs> Reciprocating this relationship. This is great. Oh, my God. I'm so embarrassed. Do you know anything about him? 
He has two dogs named Waffles and Bonnie. Okay, I used to have a dog named Bonnie. Really? Yeah. Uh, she used to like um, escape in the backyard all the time. So like she was oh. an escape artist. So I called her Bonnie, like Bonnie and Clyde. Even That's though they adorable. robbed things, I don't think she's an escape artist, but it made sense uh, to me. They, they also escaped. Like, they would rob and escape, and then they got shot down. Wait. Yeah. So, it did make sense. Wow. Yeah. I was on it. I was like seven. You're totally on it. I'm really mortified that I can't remember his favorite scent now. That's fair. But, yeah. I mean, I just feel like, you know, if you have your podcast in your bio of your Instagram, it's pretty much inviting right. anyone that finds you on social media to be like, oh, I wonder if she's talked about me yet. Right. Right. And right. Yeah. Assuming, I mean... Taking into consideration that this is five minutes into our episode and you've already brought up your hens match. He didn't really have to dig too far. <laughs> no, no. He could have literally clicked. I made a link tree for myself this week. Wait, cute. Yeah. You know, it was like I wanted to link Jake's candle because I'm helping him win the contest. And mm. then I was like, but I don't want to take away the almost on air link. And then I also linked my book reading account, which right. is at Chummy Reads for anyone listening. And then I also linked my Spotify because I like to make playlists. So I thought. You want to get to know me on here? Go to those four links. I like that you linked your Spotify. I kind of want to do that. I'm so torn between sharing all of my favorite music on my social medias because, A, I love to share music with people, but Mm -hmm. at the same time, there are some songs I like to keep close to, like, my heart, if that doesn't sound too corny. And, like, I only like to share some music with people who are trying to actually get to know me. That makes sense. Yeah. You can make secret, like... I went through and I made a bunch of my playlists secret so that only I can see them. So they're yeah, not for... all of my playlists are secret, actually. Except for the Almost New Music Friday. Except for the Almost New Music Friday. You can find it on which... Spotify. Links in the bio. Almost on air on Instagram. Yeah, which, John, when was the last time you put a song oh on Almost God. New Music Friday? Oh, my God. I forgot we had that. <laughs> yeah. I'd been updating it every week and noticed John had what? it. I finally was like... You have? John, yeah. I don't really, like, let things slip through the cracks. Well, you're... <laughs> what about me? Stop being concerned about yourself and hey, I'm drowning here. Really put throw out a life jacket or something. I didn't want to nag you, so I figured like if he had new music he really liked, he'd put it on there. Not nagging when it's something I actually have to do. Oh. Nagging is like I, I view nagging to be asking me to do things that like aren't necessary, you know? Okay. I can't think of an example. <laughs> yeah. But it's so like, like go to the gym. When I say that to you, that's nagging. That's nagging ish, you yeah. know, or like, did you have enough vegetables today? It's like, get out. Like, I'm fine. You know, I promise to never ask you about your vegetable. Intake. And that's why I don't unless think you you're really me. unwell. Mm. Then Mentally or physically. Both. Mm. Just pay mm. attention. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. You're all currently. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was like, yeah, you should have noticed that a long time ago. I'm very oh unwell. Oh, my God. Um, no, I good. have another really incredible story for you. But first, first, okay. first. I'm waiting. We have more free beer. I liked beer. Oh, is this? Am I supposed to talk over like this? Beer. Yeah. What? Oh, no. No, I'm not supposed to talk over that. I forgot we had a free beer intro. Me too. We forgot it last time when we had Carla Marie and Anthony on. But I was looking at it now. And I was like, I got to hit yeah. it. Um, very exciting. I also so, don't John, know about this free beer, so you're actually telling me about it. I know. This is why it's even more exciting. I never get to do the free beer. Um, you are getting your second shot this weekend. For, I no, sure this week. am. Thursday. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. So by the time you hear this, I would have gotten it yesterday. So by the time you hear this, John may be very, very sick. True, but I also said that last time, and I was just fine, although this totally. is my second shot. So we'll see how I actually do this time. I look forward to the update. Thank you. Um, so... You are eligible to enter into Budweiser's free beer contest. Amazing. Or and this not one, contest. Sweepstakes. And this one hasn't ended yet. Like the Sam Adams when we talked about It has not ended yet. Week. No. Oh, so basically, um, all you have to do okay. is take a picture of your I got vaccinated sticker. Easy. Or Wait, you your bandage sticker? from the shot or oh. a selfie from the vaccination site. I know. I didn't get a sticker either. Yeah. What? I want a sticker. I know. I've stickers? been offended by it. Um, and then you go to a beeronbud.com. A beeronbud.com. A beer. Wait, hold on. I'm going to I'm gonna go to it right now. Can I go to it right now? Sure. A beeronbud.com. Oh, like is it open yeah, right now? Yeah, is it yes. active? It should be. My cool. Um, oh, it redirects you to a place called mycooler.com. Oh, this is, wait, this is cool. Continue. So you upload <laughs> one of those pictures of your, I got vaccinated sticker, a selfie from your vaccination site or of your bandage. And then... You have to do all that before one of those things before May 16th. And Budweiser is giving away $10,005 virtual debit cards to people 
who enter. So is this another one of those situations where once those 10,000 are gone, they're done giving out free beer? I do think so. Okay, I'm upset. I, I, gotta, I gotta voice this. I'm pissed. Oh my God, wait. I'm dying. I just read the fine print. <laughs> okay. And it says, entrants have to be over 21. Duh. Yeah, fair. And residents of Alabama, Texas, and California are not eligible what? according to the rules. How? I have, there it is does a, not say why. There's a Budweiser brewery here in Los Angeles. You're right. What? I'm really sorry. Okay, well, I'm pissed for that. And also, there was another reason. On the Sam Adams one we were talking about last week, they also gave it to the first 10,000 people who would tag them or whatever. And yeah. they gave you $7. Now, mm. Budweiser is, I would assume, a bigger beer company with arguably more money in their bank account. And they're going to give us $5 less money? Kind of whack. But this I is why we're not a Budweiser you... podcast. Whoa. If you go to a bar and you order a Budweiser versus going to a bar and ordering a Sam, no, they're probably the same, huh? Budweiser's probably cheaper. That's what I'm saying. That's why they're giving you less money. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that kind of makes sense, actually. Yeah, yeah. Wait, who owns Miller Lite? Isn't that a Coors? Isn't it Coors Miller? Miller Coors? No, isn't Miller Lite its own thing? Um, mm. Unclear at this time. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Dang. Well, that's your free beer of the week. If you live in California or Texas or Alabama, I'm super sorry and you can't have it. So Melo is out. In California and Texas. Most of our listeners in California are out. But we do have some from like Carla Marie and Anthony who, who owns Miller are Light. not in California, Alabama, Coors. or Texas. Oh, nice. Coors owns Miller. That's why I like them. I knew it. I knew it. Are you done having a yeah. <laughs> meltdown? Okay, cool. Uh, that's all I got. That's your free beer. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed every second of it. No, you actually, didn't. I half enjoyed it. I you enjoyed didn't enjoy it at all. Actually, I didn't enjoy any of it. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be positive, but I can't. I literally can't. Yeah. I'm like anti-Budweiser. I don't know what it is. Their horses are cool, I guess. Yeah, the commercial featured a Clydesdale and a puppy. Yeah, but I still like the Coors commercials better. Well, to each their own, John. To Let each their own. everyone enjoy their own free beer as they wish. That's fair. I need a better story than the free beer now because I was Unless really excited. Unless you first. live in California, Texas, or Alabama, <laughs> you want you want my really amazing story that Wait, I've been holding out on you. Refill my drink first because I'm really excited. Yeah, sure. So, oh my god, you opened the empathy rosé. Oh, I didn't <laughs> even think. <about> it. <laughs> okay, you guys. So you know that the last two up or the last two times we drank wine, we did reviews of the empathy <laughs> wines. <laughs> And John just showed me. He just <laughs> casually brought a bottle of wine into the picture, and he's drinking the rosé, which we were going to do eventually. You know when you promise your significant other um, that you'll, like, save Don't a movie for them? No, I'm just saying like, in I general. Know you're not, but... or, or a friend that, like, oh, I won't sure. do this until we are together. Um, I feel like that was empathy wines for you and I. Mm -hmm. And I totally disregarded that bond that we had. Our entire okay. commitment issue. I have commitment issues, apparently. That's and true. Um, I, I opened my empathy wine. I opened it last night, to be honest. <laughs> I was just like, oh, wait, wait, I know. I see your face. Listen, <laughs> let's, let me explain myself. It's not going to help, but I need to explain myself. That's so, okay. Last night, I was like, I need a glass of wine. Like, we're out of beer. Okay. We're out of everything. And I'm like. Oh, you were. I thought you were saying, like, that was just your first thought was wine. Uh, but I, was like, I also yeah. kind of enjoyed it, though. You know, like. Rosé is amazing. I'm just in a wine phase right now, which I have another you, story to get you to. You needed, about. like, a come down. Like, you needed the, like. Hmm. Okay. Relax. I like, okay. I did. That's what wine is. And I feel like wine you can drink um, in a very chill manner, but also you don't have mm -hmm. to have as much of it as you do with beer to like start feeling the effects, which I enjoyed. Sure. So last night I had a glass and I was like, I will save the rest of this for our podcast. It's just a glass. I don't need to finish the whole bottle for the podcast anyway. <laughs> so I will just have a glass and then I will save the rest for tomorrow. And then I forgot to text you that I was opening the rest of the wine for this podcast. I just mm -hmm. assumed, like, wine is just such a natural thing for us right now. I just assumed you, right. we were on the same mental page. So I just opened this wine. I literally had it next to me. And then I was pouring it in front of the camera. And I saw your face. And I was like, I never told you. I didn't tell her. Well, yeah. could you give us a review, your feelings on the rosé? And next time I drink, whenever I drink the rosé, I'll give my review. Absolutely. Um, it's fantastic. Great. That's my review. Um, I expected rosé to be extremely sweet. Because oh, I feel no. like I've had, like, the Stella Rosa... Once, mm, no, this is like probably a dry. Yeah, and it's also like thirteen percent, which fantastic. First of all, mm. but I'm really excited because I thought I would do a science experiment today. Okay. So, I got this rosé. 
I got science classes. Oh, these are my, my goggles. God. And I found a white claw in the fridge. And now I'm going to do Jake's recipe that he told me. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to. He told to, you to do the rose with. Do you remember what flavor? Because I don't. No, but that's not. I think it was like a raspberry. Oh, I don't know. I got mango. I found mango okay. in the fridge. And I was like, mango plus rose probably has a good effect. So for science, I'm going to attempt this. Looks pretty good. Is this your first time drink pouring the white claw or did you try it before? Uh, this is my first time pouring the white claw. I had okay. the rosé before just okay. to, as, a, as an appetizer, a wine right. appetizer. Yeah, a little um, test your palate. And now I'm trying it with the mango white okay. claw. You didn't stir that, so I'm a little worried about that. No, because if you pour it from high enough, it stirs the wine itself. Dude, I have so many things to tell you. How long has this been? <laughs> First of all, it's great. Everyone put a white claw on your rosé. It's fantastic, okay? Do you have so many things to tell me about the wine or uh, about life? <laughs> about life. Well, two okay, things. Let's... I will let you get to your story. I'm just like cutting you off real quick. I got time. Go okay, for it. that's good. Um, so I w- it just reminded me that as I was pouring this white claw into my rosé, I was like, the higher you pour it, the more I feel like it mixes as it lands into your liquid drink, right? Sure. So there's a new skill that I've been telling myself that i want to learn lately bartending whoa yes but no but definitely that okay um i would really love to learn how to be one of those basically i want to be an at-home barista and i want to learn to pour my coffee from like 20 feet in the air literally okay you know like i want to like pour my little uh, just a little bit of creamer at the bottom and then i want to start pouring my coffee from my coffee pot here in my room and i want to gradually get higher and i want to like i want my aim to be impeccable i just want to be like flexing in my room as an at-home barista like i've been working at home for a year and what do i have in coffee skills to show for it uh uh, nothing you know what i'm saying so i need to learn some skills so i feel like i want to learn to be like a port like a high quality height i want you to do whatever you want to do but my question is yeah literally why uh looks cool and it'll make me feel like i've but if you're alone in your room (laughs) who does it look cool for i'm gonna send you a video (laughs) I don't care. <laughs> well, <laughs> don't try to look cool for me. <laughs> there are a lot of things on social media I don't really care about, but I appreciate people doing their thing and I'm going to okay. be out here doing my thing. I would like, so I am fully supportive of you doing this, wow. but I do want, I want you to document the attempting process. Like I want like a <laughs> once a week, you know how you post the dumb camel on um, every Wednesday? R- do not say dumb. It is not dumb. You know how you post that camel yeah, every Wednesday? I know that. Exactly. Yep. I'd love like a Friday barista training check-in. Okay. I would like to post my first one this week and I will let you know. I will we'll document my first attempt and then maybe my fifth. Right, right. You don't have to do like every one, but I'm just saying like every Friday. So even if it's your first eighth. Oh, guys, I'm going to be so good at this. Literally, after you see this, you're going to be like, God, I wish I could do that. And I'm like, you can't because you didn't put it in the practice. Also... Do I need special equipment to perform Perhaps. said action? Like, can you just use a regular coffee pot? I'm going to do the research. This is something you should figure out yeah. on your first attempt. Yeah, don't answer that. I'll do the research. Okay, why And you can you wear those me? science goggles. Science. While you do it. This is all for science, man. These are definitely not science goggles, but do they kind of look like it? Why do they look frothy? They're very frothy. Why? <laughs> so these are actually diffraction glasses. I don't know what that you know those is. are. Anyways, no. I bought these glasses because then you put this film on it and it diffracts light into a million different ways. So okay. when you look at light through these glasses, it just like shatters and it looks super cool. Is that for like when you're doing drugs? Drugs. I mean, actually, yeah, drug people do use that. Um, but I do use it for just like normal cool things. Look at that. Uh, oh yeah, it's kind of a kaleidoscope. John is putting it in front of his camera whoa, right now. Oh, YouTube benefits here. What's up? Very fun. Anyways. Yes, the YouTube benefits. Also, did you we noticed um today on our last episode for some reason halfway through my audio only cuts out. Were you able to fix it? Dude. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. Wait, so wait, you can't fix it? I literally downloaded the entire video again and it did the same thing, but in my audio software, that's not the case. That's pretty bizarre. I derailed well, we'll this entire eventually. podcast and I very much apologize, but these were very important things that I needed to get across to you. Was that it? I felt like you had two things. Oh yeah, there was another one. So I went to- What's up? <laughs> Before you apologize, get to the other. <laughs> so uh, in terms of wine, I went to uh, a lunch with my sister and my Italian family this week on my dad's side. Okay. Right? And like, I forget how Italian my family is. Okay. Like, I just like, 
don't really come to terms with it as much, but they're very Italian and they're also very into wine. So we went to this very authentic Italian restaurant here in Fullerton um, to celebrate my sister because she's moving to South Carolina. She like got into a PhD program there. She decided. And she decided. She's sending oh, it 100%. Her. So she's moving this fall to South Carolina. How and long will she be gone? Five years, dude. Five years. Oh, that's going to be sad for you. I see my little sister at least every other week at the least. So it's yeah. definitely going to be a challenge. So hmm. we were celebrating this, like ordering some wine and stuff. And they were like, oh, John, what kind of wines do you like? And I looked like an idiot at this table. What did you say? I was like, uh, white. And they're like, oh, like which ones? And I was like, empathy. <laughs> and they're, no. They're like, no, what kind of white wine? And I was like, I don't, I've had a soft blanc before. And they were like, oh, I think I listened to that podcast. Was that like the five ninety nine one you bought at the liquor store? Uh huh. I was like, uh huh. Yeah, that's the one. Yep. And that's they it. were very embarrassed of me. The waitress was there. She gave me a dirty look. And they were like, mm -hmm. look, you cannot go out with us again until you are at least somewhat familiar with your wines, but we'll take care of it for the rest of this lunch. So, look, I'm with your family. I've been trying to educate you on this for like a year. Yeah, I know. I know. And I shouted you out and I was like, look, my co host has been telling me this this entire time. I shouted you out. Like, I was, like my whole family knows who you are. And oh. I was just like, I look, I'm trying, guys. I'm try I can only take it one step at a time. This is like my third week on our podcast reviewing wines, and this is a rosé, and I like it. And that's all I can tell you right now. Right. Well, I'm really excited for when you go to lunch with your Italian family again, and they are so proud of you because you actually know wine. Thank you. I'm like disrespecting my culture right now. They yeah. They're pissed. Yeah. Anyway. Also, like a lunch wine is different than a dinner wine. Yeah. And they like. Had you want like a crisp little like fun guy for lunch. And they were talking about, oh, my God, one of them like was holding their glass up and the, the waitress was asking how they enjoyed it. And she was like, hold on. I'm trying to look for the legs. And I was like, oh, my God. Didn't I go. tell you that? Yes, you did. It pissed oh. me off. I heard that and I was, I was upset. I was like, oh, God. This, I don't like my this family's wine definitely a wine family though well so is yours apparently yeah they just... are I'm the only outlier here so well you will get better and you will fit in more with your family and everything will be okay thank you it's only taken me like 20 something years you, you didn't want to admit that you're almost 28 <laughs> I, I left it out for a reason all right mm, right 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 no John's 22 guys yeah John's 22. I'm mentally 24 I think I get questions all the time of like oh how much younger is John than you and I'm like at least five years no six months <laughs> seven months or you're actually eight months younger than me almost like to the day nice but still just saying Thank I you. was making a face again YouTube benefits hey that's all um right. Okay, was that it? I'm, Are you good? I'm so sorry. I literally just no. got so excited and I was just like, I gotta derail this and I gotta John, like tell you're just you the story. Building the anticipation. Okay? Before I forget them. I forget them. I, I'm very forgetful. I know. I know. You didn't even warn me about these things. No. <laughs> and usually we warn each other about stories for the podcast. Yeah, I try to put like two keywords on our rundown, so I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta talk about that. Right. But if I don't have it on the rundown, I'm never gonna remember later. So like you just gotta let me like of course not. blurb it out. Um so Wait, speaking so of like this is the story what? you were telling me about five days ago, right? This is the story. <laughs> you told me I have something super exciting to tell you this week. And I was like, well. I didn't say exciting. I said a really good story. Okay. And I said, tell me now. And you said, no. No. So on Friday, Friday evening, I was texting with my best friend, but I was also working out. My parents had gone out to dinner. So I was just like here. I was like doing a lot, checking on the dogs, texting with my best friend. And there was also this guy from Hinge that nice. I was talking to and like we'd been talking for a couple of days and it felt like probably around the time that we should meet and I was actually like I think earlier last week I told you I didn't think I was ready right to meet someone and then this guy I was like you know what I think that I would be comfortable meeting him nice so I and my best friend has been calling him golf cutie because he's a golfer yeah sounds and hot. So I'm like talking to her about it and I'm like, okay, I finally text her. What did I say? Um, should I go out with GC on Sunday? Question mark. Golf and cutie. Then I send a, golf cutie. Yeah. And then I sent a new one that says, I'm scared. <laughs> I go about my workout. No big deal. I'm like, she hasn't answered. That's weird. Um, look at my phone. I did not text my best friend, should I go out with GC on Sunday? I'm scared. I said, 
that to him. No. <laughs> <laughs> so then, like, I panicked no. so hard, John, because I was just, like, doing a bunch of stuff. I wasn't paying attention. And then I panicked so hard. I'm, like, having hot flashes. I'm, like, dripping sweat at this oh point. My God. And I text, like, OMG, ha, 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 ha. Clearly that wasn't meant for you. Because okay, in wait. my mind, I'm like, he knows. <laughs> Mm, but were his initials anything close no. to GC? No. And that's where I went wrong. Yes. I could have avoided the whole thing by being like, oh my God, haha. Ha. I meant, you know, that wasn't meant for you. That was for someone else. But my reaction was so aggressive. What like, did you type all back caps, to that? Like screaming to him. And he finally was like, and then I said like, oh my God, I'm going to go and <laughs> into a hole now i'm gonna go hide in a hole now and he responds yeah i think you should go hide in a hole now but i'm confused my initials aren't gc and i was like oh shit (laughs) so then i'm i facetime my best friend i'm like what do i do i have to tell this guy (laughs) that i just called it i refer to him as golf cutie he doesn't know it's golf cutie though he just knows it's gc no he just knows it's gc this is a way better story than i thought this was gonna be oh my god (laughs) (laughs) um so she's like, you have to tell him. And like her boyfriend was there and and he was like, I don't think it'll be a big deal. Like he probably will think it's funny. It's fine. He's like, if it was me, I would totally think it's funny. So I would John, love it. I want to ask you, if you got a text that said, should I go out with RC and they mean radio cutie, like okay. would you be mortified to find out? That no, that's what they were calling you. See, I, I feel like I would be confused. Be honest, because this has more to the story. I, I think you have to be honest with him. Because if you don't, I think it opens up the possibility that you're referring to someone else and going out on multiple dates at the same weekend. Which, again, wouldn't be the end of the world if you're just meeting someone, but still a bad foot to set off on when you're dating. You know yeah, what I like mean? Yeah, like not the vibe to be like, oh, by the way, I'm like going out with all kinds of Yes, dudes. like I'm right. sorry I texted you on accident about another guy that I'm trying to – like I would hate that. Right. You know what I mean? That's just like not right. a good foot to, to start on. So, But you wouldn't be weirded out by a girl having like a code name with her best friend for you? No. No, absolutely not. I think that's like okay. most people do. I have like code names for a lot of people. That's that's true. You and I have code names yeah. for girls. There so. are people we have like mutually known that we both have code names for, you know? Totally. Totally. So I, I, I don't mind that at all. I think you kind of expect it. And I also think it's like flattering kind of. Okay, right? Like golf cutie could be so much worse. Yeah. And also if you're going to go out with him, he clearly knows you think he's cute, A. And true. B, like it's not like you said, oh my god, I love this guy. It's like, eh, no, should I, I go think out it with him? It was the "I'm scared" follow up that really mm. worried me. It was less so the "Should I go out with GC on Sunday?" and more so the the. It was literally two different texts. Should I go out with GC on Sunday? New text. I'm scared. <laughs> uh, I feel like "I'm scared" could mean multiple things, though. Well, right. So then he was like, "Oh, this." Is what where did you do? He was like. So I sent like the like, oh my God, haha, not meant for you. I'm going to go die in a hole now. Thinking he would pick up immediately that it was about him. But like I mm. get now the GC totally is like. Yeah, that's throw. very misleading. It, it, he doesn't know your confusing. life. Like he, it could absolutely mean someone else. Yeah. So he was like, oh, those aren't my initials though. And I was like, this is mortifying. But like my best friend and I give nicknames to every guy. It doesn't matter like who they are, even if we're not interested, whatever. And I was like, and she calls you golf cutie. I blamed it on her. It, I totally started that, by the way. Oh, you should have told so, him. You should have 100% told him. No. So I was like, she she started calling you that. So we just like call you that now. And he was like pretty cool about it. But he said, he was like, I don't know if I believe you. I think that he thought I was referring to a different guy. So he literally said, mm. I don't know if I believe you. And I was yeah. like, oh my God, no. Like, I'm so embarrassed. I would not be this embarrassed if it was another guy. Like, Whatever. Um, and it all seemed fine. But then he was like, well, are you going – like, was I just supposed to, like, find out through the grapevine that you wanted to go out on Sunday? Because we hadn't talked about Sunday. Oh, so and I was wait, like, you haven't even told him that you wanted to go out yet? You were asking no, your friend – No, we had talked before. about going out, but we had not talked about a day. Oh, got it, got it, got it. So then – I said Sunday to my best friend because I was going to suggest it to him. And so he was like, was I just supposed to find out through the grapevine? Like, and I get it, whatever. I think that's what fueled him thinking it was another guy. Right, right, right. And I was like, oh my God, no, I like, I'm busy Saturday. It's already Friday night. So I was going to suggest Friday, whatever, or I mean Sunday. And um, so it, I, he was like, uh, and I was like, no, I was going to send a, a, pig- a carrier pigeon. And then I sent a gif of a pigeon 
and then said like like wrote a fake note from me like i recovered Wait, that's, really that's, well that's I actually think. really cute yeah and he Nailed loved that. it and he like responded because i did like yes or no with emojis and he like responded with the yes emoji and all of this and like we talked the next day and then saturday night i was drunk and he was like and i was like so like are we gonna go out or not and he was like yeah yeah i think i can tomorrow whatever and then like nothing on sunday nothing this week so Wait. like was it the text that threw it off or did he just freak out at the thought of actually meeting okay who left the conversation last so this is a because, weird thing to say. My, yeah, go ahead. I'll tell because it is context. I think that matters. Yes, here. I agree. The last thing I said on Saturday night was he asked me to go out Saturday night, and I was like, I'm out with friends. I can't. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, don't really love that last minute ness of mm, it. I love like it. make a plan. Mm. I've done the last minute. I've done the no plan. Yeah, it's fun, I'm right? I know. I love it too. I'm so <laughs> done with it. Um. <laughs> I'm like on a soapbox now. I'm like, no, that's fair. Uh, I agree to disagree. I agree that a plan needs to be made for the first date, but I don't think there's any fault in asking, hey, by chance, are you free right now? Yeah, it just kind of felt like he like assumed I'd be free. And I was like, no, I'm busy. Mm, That's fine. And then didn't he didn't try to make a plan. So whatever. And then I was like, we were talking about other stuff. And I was like, oh, yeah, this this next couple of weeks are so crazy. I have like weddings and baby showers like all over the place. And the next morning he responded was like, oh, I guess we should hop on the trend then with like a like flirty face of like getting married and having babies. Right. OK. All right. And I respond. Yeah. If that's what all the cool kids are doing. Good joke. And he and never good responded. Hmm. Nothing. Oh, my God. I should go back and make sure he didn't respond. What if he did? <laughs> Can you please make sure right now? Because <laughs> everything we say from here on out is going to depend on whether or not. He actually replied. I'm to double that. checking. I would feel really bad if I was the one who accidentally let it like. Because I enjoy that he made that joke knowing that it's a joke. And I think you had the perfect totally. response to it. Thank you. No, no, that's the last. Yeah. So, um, I mean, his loss, like I have no course, hard feelings about it, but I'm like, do you think it was the text? No, I don't think so. I don't think it was anything specifically that you did because I think it's easy to forgive those random awkward situations. If you're interested enough and you think you have enough in common, like you'll overlook that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Totally. So like maybe there were just things like he just thought you didn't have in common, you know? I will say, and this will be my last thing on Hinge. I know we've gone into it a ton. <laughs> no, but it's fun. Uh, It is fun. <laughs> I am like, this week has been a big turning point for me where I feel like I'm like really... Dude. I'm enjoying this. Dude. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Good for you. Thank you. What was I saying, though? Uh, oh, I, I did mention to him on... So last Tuesday, I got my vaccine. So Wednesday, I felt like garbage. And hmm. he and I had been texting, and I hadn't brought up the vaccine because I was like... Uh, I don't know how people feel about it, especially I'm in Arizona right now. And like a lot of people have different views of me. Whatever. Right, right. And then he asked like, oh, but like, how was your day? And I was like, well, I'm not going to lie and be like, it was so great. How was yours? So I was like, oh, honestly, I've been feeling really sick. Uh, I got the vaccine yesterday and, you know, second shot, whatever. And he didn't follow it up with like, oh, okay, I get my second shot in two weeks. Good to know. Mm-hmm. Or even like, oh, yeah, I got mine, whatever. He said nothing about, about the vaccine. He just said, oh, did you ever get it? He meant COVID. Got it. And I just felt like that was weird and probably meant he wasn't like super down with the vaccine. Um, or you could just be reading into it. You or know? I'm reading into it's it. It's very possible. <laughs> but also there's different levels of not being cool with the vaccine, I think. Right. Um, there are some people who just like have their doubts about it, which I feel like is is fine. You know what I mean? Like, or who have health, different health things, and that's why they don't want it. Uh, Ricky in Twenty Something's Doing Nothing a couple weeks talked about she has some other health things that she was like they don't have enough research yet yes. for me to feel comfortable getting it, and I super respect. And that. I think that's a valid argument. It's like not having yeah. enough research. Like it is kind of fast. You know what I mean? Um, right. Like, but then there are the there's a microchip in my body, people. <laughs> yes. Like, that to me is like, it's a little bit of a stretch. Like, I'm into conspiracy theories. I believe in aliens. You know, like, I think those right. those little dudes are here. 
Uh, but the microchip in your body's like, that's a lot for me to like follow, especially like when I'm holding a cell phone, which is literally a microchip on your body at all times. Right. Like, what does it really matter? Yeah. Um, but like, I mean, some of I have family members that like are nervous to get the vaccine. I get it. Um, yeah. I'm down. I got it. I'm getting my second shot. I got it yesterday. If you're listening to this, what's up? Um, yeah. You know, so I yeah, get that. I just, but I don't think that's like going to be something that's going to separate him from not wanting to match with you on Hinge. You know what I mean? Right. And like we've talked about, my profile says liberal for the purpose of letting people know making sure people know how you're just being upfront Um, about your feelings and your beliefs yeah so it's just it's very strange and it was weird that he like didn't really respond to that but then obviously we kept talking because that was wednesday and then friday was when i sent the accidental text (laughs) um and we talked all saturday i almost think this makes you more personable the accidental text yeah i feel like it just makes you more fun like it gives you more to talk about it breaks the like we're on a surface level like it, right it, you know what i mean For it just me, breaks that whole vibe it felt like if you can't handle that like that's who i am it's really if you were to, like and, sum me yeah. up in a story it is that so, true. so if you can't handle that like oh, gladly see you out <laughs> yeah and i feel like that's like kind of the fun about dating and hinge is like you get to have some of these interactions and of course not all of them are going to work out but no you got some great stories out of it you know and like it's fun yeah. in the meantime who cares I know. Speaking of fun, though, so Carla Ray and Anthony last week, obviously we had them on last week, and then yes. they do their own podcast, My Day Friday. Nice. Um, on My Day Friday last week, they were talking about Shot Girl Summer. Not Hot Girl Summer, Shot Girl Summer. And, you know, I listened to it and thought, yeah, Shot Girl Summer, let's go, baby. Literally three days later, two days later, I am working out, and it suddenly it pops into my head. Oh, they mean shot girl summer. Like getting shots into your arms. Erica. Not taking shots. Erica. Erica. I know. Erica. It's a rough week for me in my brain, okay? First of all, both can be, you know, they don't have to be mutually exclusive. You know, like I they agree. can both happen at the same time. I'm down for But certainly the phrase means definitely shots, like vaccinated vaccine shots. shots. I'm surprised, like, you didn't catch on when, like, Waxed and Vaxed was coming out? You didn't catch on? No? No, of course I got Waxed and Vaxed. Oh, cool. Well, then Shot Girl Summer. I didn't put Waxed and Vaxed in the same category as Shot Girl Summer. I think you need to be Waxed and Vaxed to enjoy your Hot Girl Summer. It's not Hot Girl Summer, Summer. it's your Shot Girl (laughs) Summer. (laughs) A valid point. However, I think you need to, I think you need one for the other. Do you have to be Waxed? I'm going to say, yeah, it's summer, you know, it's hot. <laughs> Things are sweating. You can sweating. say that as a man who doesn't have to go through it, okay? <laughs> no, I mean, but I also, I have other things besides waxing to make sure that sweat does okay, not so accumulate. so do girls. Yeah, well, that's fine. You don't have to be okay. necessarily waxed. Okay. This is derailed. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah. what, a, what a strange commentary on landscaping we have just started yeah. to have. <laughs> um. Totally with you. Uh, I don't remember. Oh, but I am so looking forward to. I think that I was I was holding myself back from being really excited for what I will only refer to as shot girl summer now. Nice. I was afraid that something would happen. I wouldn't have the vaccine or like my friends wouldn't be able to get it in time. You know, like I was just kind of like holding out my excitement to make sure that I wasn't like too excited for something that wasn't going to happen. Yeah, yeah, no, I totally get that. I usually do that with most things in life because it's easy oh. to set your expectations low so you could and overshoot them, them all the time, dude. Yeah, no, I, I like to live my life with very high expectations and that has been a problem in my relationship. Yeah, I usually set my expectations on the floor. So it is just easy to just overcome How's them. How's that working for your love life? Um, Okay. <laughs> Uh, this is another whole podcast topic, I, but I think my love life yeah. is the only time my expectations are too high. Oh, okay. So you're like me with too high of expectations. Yes. And I don't like to be a too high expectation person, but when it comes to my dating and love life, my expectations are literally like so high and I think I've set them too high and we should probably do an entire podcast about this. We should. Okay. So we already know that next week we're going to talk about breakups. Yeah. We have a listener um, going through a breakup. Mm-hmm. Um, as well as really both of us. Yeah. So <laughs> we're pretty experienced, you know? Yes. Yeah, so we're going to do that. But then we we really should do a whole episode on expectations in a relationship. That's yeah. a great idea. Because like, I don't know if I'm right and I need a lot of help. <laughs> I don't know if I am either. And I feel like I'm learning a lot about, 
I will save it for that podcast. I'm yeah. learning a lot about it though. That's fair. Um, but back to Shot Girl Summer, I have so many weddings mostly weddings which includes like a rehearsal dinner i mean i have baby showers and bridal showers but those are less like shot girl summer-ish you know if you know what i'm are you picking up i what mean I'm up? kind of but at the same time single people at a wedding can participate in shot girl summer no that's what i'm saying john oh then yeah i said the I'm bridal in. showers and the baby showers are less shot girl summer the weddings are super shot girl okay summer. i guess yeah 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 because i just i didn't put it together that when you go to a baby shower are there guys at baby showers? No, not usually. There's some that are co-ed, but huh. it's usually like couples. But definitely not, not the bridal like, shower. No, no dudes at the bridal shower. Yeah, less shot girl summer. Right, right. Unless right. you like girls. But cute content for the Instagram. Mm, very cute. A little, a little shot girl summer. It, it's hard anyway, to get the cute content um, when it's not shot girl summer. You know. I've had a lot. I've had very little cute content. As most people have. I wouldn't feel bad about it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not feeling too bad about it, but. What is like the number one thing you are going to make sure happens this summer? Oh my God. I literally want one thing multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I we know. could just end the podcast <laughs> right there. I know where your brain's at and it's not that. And my brain went to two places, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't. I only know one of the places and like I don't hate it. Oh, but it's not a what singular I was place, about. but differently done. Oh, okay. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Take with that what you will. However, yeah. what I was originally <laughs> intending to say in this situation, I want to be um, moderately intoxicated, probably a five to six out of ten okay. on the drunk scale, inside a crowd with my friends and a bunch of strangers with great music playing. That's all I want. A million times. So it could be live music. It could be a DJ. At a crowded bar. I'm going to festival. I'm going bar. I'm going... Oh, yeah, you're going to EDC, right? I am going to EDC, which we should definitely talk when about. When is that? Um, that is literally a month from this weekend. So it's... May 22nd? 21st, 22nd, 23rd. It's going to be the first major festival since COVID. So freaking exciting. Yeah. You will be at your first or anyone's first major festival since COVID. I will be at like a big old wedding with every Dude, nice? high school friend of mine. I got I'm, so excited. I'm going to be That's honest. Gonna like it's uh it's it's a lot of people and I understand that some people don't feel comfortable and I I don't expect everyone there to be vaccinated. You know what I mean? That's very mm. soon for a festival, I think. Are I, they not requiring any sort no. of No. At least not that they've released as of yet. Hmm. Uh, maybe things will change as we get there, but I will personally be completely vaccinated, so will my two roommates that I'm going with. So I feel good about it, but it's like yeah, it's kind of touchy, you know? It is because <clears throat> There's the whole thing that, like, you can still get it. Yeah, but, like, it's, like, essentially going to be a bad cold or a flu. Like, I'm not going to die, essentially, if you have the vaccine. Because True. Because you have a or 99% chance of being cool. Um, no, you have a 100% chance of not dying. Right. It's, like, 99 yeah. of not getting it. And if you do get it, you're not going to die. You're right. And, you're like, right. if I have so to you feel get pretty good about that? not death COVID to go to a festival, give it to me. I'll take it right now. <laughs> like, I'm kind of with you. You know? Uh, starting this weekend, I'm out of town every single weekend except for two until middle of July. Dude. I mean, June, sorry. And I'm just like, you know what? We're going to be as safe as possible, but I'm going to hug the shit out of my people. Like we waited for this, you know? Yeah. They told us, wait, vaccine. When vaccine happens, you can go out. And now that the vaccines mm -hmm. are happening and people are getting fully vaxxed, I'm going to do what you told me, you know? I'm out of uh, here. Yeah. Let's go. I'm, I'm ready. So pretty pumped about I'm it. really ready. Me too. Um, do you yeah, feel weird I, when you go to these weddings being one of your same age friends, but single friends? Hmm. Wow. Thanks for that question. That just, I mean, just curious. Yeah. I'm also, I have a group of 15 girlfriends at home and I think only like three or four of us are single. Okay. And it, I am so, I want to like make it very clear. I am extremely happy. All of my friends are so happy and I'm so happy for them. But it does make me go, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I used to be there. <clears throat> okay. Well, where are you now? Um, I'm pumped <laughs> with where I'm okay. at, to be honest. Um, I, I'm like very comfortable in this 2021 mindset, which is cool. But similarly, I have not as big of a like a core friend group. I have probably a core friend group of six or seven people. For the record, no one has our friend group is weird. It's fine. It's very big. Um, yeah. But I have like six or seven core 
best guy friends that I talk to mm-hmm. on a on a normal basis. And half of them recently got engaged within the past, I don't know, a couple of months, weeks. Oh, so you're going to have a very busy 2022. Yes. So like everyone's been talking about this whole wedding thing and it's like been a thing that I've been watching but not really connected to personally. However, mm-hmm. now I'm connecting very personally because a lot of my friends are getting married and I'm now going to be a groomsman for three different weddings within like a three month period. It's so fun, but so expensive. Oh my, that's what I'm nervous about, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's created this interesting divide. So uh, as we found out that our last friend got engaged, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we were very excited in the group chat. Everyone's Your lighting it up. Your most recent. Yes. Not your last friend. Your most recent friend. Correct. Yeah. Our most recent friend. They were lighting up the group chat. And we were like, bro, congrats. Like, good job. At this time, me and my roommate Kyle and one of our other friends in the group, um, we were about to go out that weekend. And so we texted them. We texted each other individually. And we were like, guys, our friends are getting engaged. Like, they're going to be married. We have three weddings in, the ne- in like, a, yeah. a few-month period. What are we doing? <laughs> you know, like, we're very single. We are very into not living out. that life right now. And right. Here we are, you know, like here it is. And then we discovered as we were talking to some of our other friends, we were, they mentioned something in our big group chat and we were like, oh, what are you talking about? He's like, oh, I'm, I must have talked about that in our group chat. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold Whoa. on, hold on. What do you mean? Our, what are you guys talking about? Our group chat. And he's like, oh, we just like have been talking in this group chat of the guys who are engaged so we can communicate about wedding stuff. And I was like, this is dividing us. We are split into two factions now. You know what I mean? It's like districts, like in the Hunger Games. Yeah, yeah. There's District One and District Negative One. You know, is the negative one like because you don't have a plus one? Yeah, that's exactly where I was going. Nice. No, no, no. <laughs> that's not what you're doing. You let me figure that I out. I sure did. I sure did. But I'm punched <laughs> for it. So I just noticed that there are these two different group chats now, and you know, it's it's interesting. It's an interesting place to be. Oh, so you have a single guys group text. You have the District Negative One group text, and then they have the District One. I'm group gonna text. call it District Negative One now because we do. We do have the district oh, I, negative one group text. I've already planned. The next time I have a boyfriend, I'm just going to text you and say, I'm in district one now. Okay. Oh, I have to get engaged to do that. Oh, uh, cool. yeah, yeah. We got yeah. years. But also, <laughs> wait, there's got to be a separate district for non-engaged, just in a relationship people. District zero. Oh, I like it. You're in the middle ground. Nice. Oh, I'm pumped. You got a plus one, but you don't got a plus one for life. Wow. I'm negative one. Same. You're so you're negative one too right now. I'm super. I'm like negative four right now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys still have the group text of all of you? Yeah, we do. We use it a lot. We're not actually okay. divided, but it just created this interesting dynamic where it's like they can talk about wedding stuff. You guys can talk about like, yeah. oh my god, it's so expensive. Be groomsmen. Like stuff. there are the things that all the guys talk about. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and then there are the things that like I wouldn't really understand, and they wouldn't really be able to participate in. So, yeah, I will say, I think it gets more normal. I do feel a little like. All the girls who are engaged, there's so many of them are engaged right now. Like not only are like so many of them in relationships, but so many of them engaged right now. And there is a part of me that's like bummed because when it comes time for me to get married, they will be far removed from that. They will probably have kids. It will just be different. How sure are you that you want kids? A hundred percent sure. Interesting. Me? Yeah. Just curious. I'm such, (laughs) I'm such a kid person. I was just on the phone with Sisney talking about how I get so much aunt time next week, both with her kids, Tia time, and my nephews. And I'm so freaking stoked. I could see that. I could see you as a mom. I feel like you're going to be a good mom. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so scatterbrained to be a mom. <laughs> uh, I feel like a lot of moms are. <laughs> That's true. Trust me. How sure are you that you want kids? Um, I feel like I'm 80% sure. Hmm. I'm mostly sure because... Like, you I'm going to be a kick-ass dad. Like, I already oh, know. you will be. Like, I will be such a good dad. I'm so excited to, like, embarrass my kids all the time. And I know that I will be able to connect with them on things. And, like, I want to be there for them. But at the same time, I'm kind of selfish. I'm kind of selfish in the way that, like, I want to be able to go experience life and go on vacations and do all these things. And I Without know them. that kids limit you on that, you know? And that's kind of the reason I won't get my own dog or cat right now because... I want to be able to do what I want to do and not have to worry about another being. And totally I feel like you, though. kids are similar, you know? They're very similar. They're more <laughs> work. But here's the thing. Yeah. 
you're like, I want to go and I want to experience life and I want to do all this. But like having a partner and having kids is totally going to end up being a part of the life that you want to experience. <laughs> That's such a good point. Because Thank one you. thing I realized too as I was growing up is – I never expect my um, my like values and the things that I want to change. Like my mindset mm-hmm. changes without me knowing, and that's my favorite part about growing up. I remember when I graduated high school, I was upset. I was pissed because I didn't want to go to college. I, I mean, I did. This is, I mean, I obviously did. But I was nervous because I loved high school so much that I was mm-hmm. like, I can't imagine wanting anything else than what I have right now. Like my life is good. I have great friends. What else do I need? And then you go to college and you're like, I don't want those things anymore. Like I want these things, right. you know, like I want right. to be able to have more experiences and more liberties and like more adult responsibilities. And then I got comfortable in college and then graduating scared the shit out of me. I was yeah, like, graduating was like, scary. It's so scary. I was like, I can't imagine not wanting these things that I get in college. And then I graduated and I was like, oh my God, I love these things. Like I love to be able yeah. to have a career and I love this life. And like now I appreciate going to bed early And I still go out when I want to, but I love being able to live this more mature life because those are just the things I want. I want to feel good the next morning. I want to be productive. I want to go and Mm -hmm. attack my goals. And those are the things that matter to me more now. So I assume that one day I will be ready for like kids and a family. And I'll be like, this is just what matters to me now, you know? And like you said, with like the cat or dog thing is it's a gradual gaining of responsibility. So you're going to end up meeting someone Hopefully. and that's going to make you stop wanting to go out so much. And then mm-hmm. maybe you guys will get a cat or a dog together and or maybe you guys will get married. She'll want to go out with me. No, for a while. Yeah. 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 But then you get to the point where you're like right. looking around and you're like, everyone's five, 10 years younger than me. And I don't want to do that. This isn't fun anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And when you're, when your friends have kids and like, it's fun to go to their houses and it's fun to like be exactly. in a more, exactly quiet setting with them where you can actually catch up because you don't have as much time to spend together it's all these things and i think it is so you're so right it's just going to change but it is gradual like it's not going to be like one day you wake up and you have a wife and kids totally totally and that's what i'm trying to to understand is that i know that that time will come and i'm just trying to enjoy myself while i get there and i think there was a period of time where i tried to rush that feeling and yeah, i noticed that like i was being unha- ready yes i i think absolutely um because like a lot of people my age are more ready for those things and it made me question mm-hmm. where i'm at But I don't think that that's a problem anymore. Like I'm comfortable with where I'm at now and I know in due time I will get there, you know? Mm -hmm. It's interesting hearing the way you talk about like wanting the things you have right now and then being a little bit uncomfortable when they change and then getting used to that, right? Because I'm so different. I think that I am constantly, it's like I work really hard to get somewhere and I really want to get there. And then I get there and I enjoy it for five minutes. And then I'm like, but what if? And I work really hard to get to the next place. And I, it's like I'm constantly, I'm very like forward thinking versus like here and now thinking. And I wish I could think a little bit more like you because I think often I forget to like, to be quite frank Mm -hmm. in my last relationship, I so badly wanted to get to the point of being official, being more stable, being able to see each other more often that I feel like I didn't Mm. get to fully enjoy Mm. the things that were so good when they were. And now looking back, I'm like, it was really, really nice. And I've said this a million times. I respect him. He's great. Of course, of course. Didn't work out. So I'm like, ah, I should have just probably enjoyed what we had when we had it. But I don't know. And you I know? don't think it's a fault to have wanted those things that you wanted, you know, because at some point you do have to get so to that either. level. But right. I agree at some point when you achieve the goals that you that you want. And this is like probably a challenge for a lot of people is like when you, when you finally achieve something that you wanted, it's hard to sit there and actually enjoy it because you should enjoy and it. Just enjoy it. You deserve yeah. to enjoy it. You're like, I finally got this thing I wanted so bad. Let's live in it for a minute. And sure, I can yep. have those goals of something that I want tomorrow or in years from now. But at the mm-hmm. same time. Let's enjoy that thing I worked for. Let's enjoy the time that we're in because you're only living in the present moment. So if you can't enjoy that, then you're kind of shutting yourself off to a lot of happiness that you could be having. I think that this podcast has been one of the few things, this podcast and the little like family we've created with it. Yeah, this content uh, family. Both. Yeah, like I'm like both with listeners and then with Carla Marie and Anthony, Ricky and Jake and us help me just enjoy this while we're doing it Mm. because I have had the thought of like at some point someone's life is going to change and 
we're not going to be able to do all of these things, but it's just so nice while we can. Like, it's so much fun. That's what's hard, too, is, and I was just telling you this morning, we had, like, an appraiser come out to, like, look at our house, right? <laughs> yes. This is, like, uh, it's going to seem off topic, but I promise you I'll bring it back. Yeah. So we had an appraiser come to check out our house today that our landlord had come come over to, like, I guess, tell him what the house is worth or whatever. Mm -hmm. And th there are many reasons of why they could do that, but essentially it could be, one of the reasons could be because he plans on selling it soon. And there I was told a John thought, this. he was not happy. Yeah, and I, there was a thought that crossed my mind that like, what if our landlord decides to sell our house in the next couple of months, you know? Right. And me living with my great friends that I live with would come to an end. And that thought at first scares me so much. Mm -hmm. And then I start to realize that like every place I've lived has come to an end and I've learned to love the next place even more. So I don't think about that anymore. And I just keep yeah. enjoying what I've got going on at this very moment. And For sure. I, it's not worth it's, it's not worth borrowing over. trouble. And Someone once told me it's borrowing trouble. Totally. And that can be a problem in relationships sometimes because I'm very much invested in the current moment. I'm like, where are we right now? What are the things we're able to do? Let's enjoy this. And part of a relationship is looking forward. You know, part of that is looking That's at true. what the future will bring. And it's hard to find a balance between Mm -hmm. enjoying the current moment and planning for the next step in your relationship. But I think it's hard to find someone that is at that same um, level with you or moving at the same pace, I should say. Yeah. You know what I mean? It is hard to find someone who's moving at the same pace as you. I think that's one of the challenges to finding a relationship that is overlooked. You know, it's, it's finding someone yeah. that's compatible with you. It's finding someone that wants the same totally. things as you, but it's also someone that's growing at a similar rate as you. I think that is a key thing. Like that's the timing aspect, but it's never, I've never heard it explained this way, but it's so true because like, I don't know. I've like met guys that I'm like, yeah, I'd get married. Totally. I mean, and then I'm like, oh, thank God I didn't. But uh, what if you, know, you are they moving weren't there. very, very fast and you are like looking to, you know, from one to f one is meeting someone and then five is like getting married and having children. Sure. And you're at a place where you would like to be at a three, right? Sure. But you meet a guy who does that at a very slower pace and he's got maybe numbers one through 10. You know, mm -hmm. and he's currently at a five. So like that's the middle. You both are at the middle. It seems like you're at the same place in life. But then as you spend those coming weeks, months and maybe even years. Yeah. One person's moving faster than the other and you don't grow well together. You're at a five. He's at a six. Exactly. You're like, let's go, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you're both at a 10, you're at your eight and he's at a five. You know what I mean? And it's like totally it's hard to find someone that grows with you. And I think that is a challenge in relationships. Gosh, wow. we are just full of wisdom. Look at us today. So I have a <laughs> shout it and shut it, but this is such a nice positive note that I refuse to do it today. <laughs> I'm actually pissed. Um, I didn't want to hear it. Tell me about CatCon. Okay. <laughs> and we will see if I am ready to do it today. Well, here's the thing. Next week, um, we'll have a breakup episode. So I should put you That's in a great right. mood for a shout it and shut it. <laughs> That's true. You know what? We're definitely saving it for next week. And uh, now I just want to hear about CatCon okay, because thing, John dude. was sending me the best text this weekend. So I talked about it on our podcast last week that I am social media friends with one of my favorite cats, Poonchik, mm -hmm. which I just want to take a pause for a minute. I was recently opened up to the idea that his name might be Poonchik. Oh, yes. I think Carla Marie yeah. do this. Which might be a thing because I didn't know. How, is, how do you spell chic? Is it C-H-I-C? Yes, John. Where have you been? I, I don't use the word chic in my everyday vocabulary. How I'm, weird. <laughs> yeah, right? So anyways, <laughs> I've noticed that a few of the cats that I know, I may have been pronouncing wrong this whole time, and this may be a theme, because my boy Belarus is based off the city Belarus. Wait, no, I said Belarus uh, and the city's Belarus. Is that right? Oh. Anyways, I I'm, don't know. might be pronouncing a lot of these cats wrong, but also, I don't know. So anyways, I joined the social media contest from... Poonchik or Poonchik, whatever it is. No, Poonchik. Poonchik or Poonchik. I'm just calling yeah. Poonchik. That's what I've called them for years. Okay, go for it. I got to find out. And I won tickets to CatCon. Now, CatCon. Virtual. Virtual CatCon. Now, CatCon is essentially like Comic-Con that you hear where it's like that big conference for all the comics. Right. But for cats, which is way better, dude. So sick. Anyways, normally it's in person here in Los Angeles every year. I have never been. But this year, obviously for COVID reasons, it was online. And I won yeah. a virtual ticket to this cat con. And I was like, dude, I'm pumped. It's like, let's check out this cat con. Let's see what it's all about, right? So I just like, I dabbled in it. I logged in. I was just like, mm, you know, I'm not really doing anything on this Saturday morning. Let's like investigate. When yeah. I got in there, it was way cooler than I thought it would be. And for the main reason of 
almost every kitten of the week we have mm -hmm. ever had was a talent guest star at CatCon. They had their own room. They were all there. They were part of the main speakers. My boy Belarus was there. Chonky Mr. B was there. Mm -hmm. Poonchick was there. All of the cats that we know here on this podcast was there. And for me, I was like nerding out. And I would try to tell my roommates and you and everyone. And everyone's like, this is the stupidest Carla thing. Carla Marie was offended that you were not did not bring her. That's so. true. I wish I could have brought her, but it was like a one person login type situation. Right, right. But question. Dude, like how cool was this? I was nerding out. I've never been so excited. So cool. But my question is. You said had their own rooms. Could you like click into different rooms? Yeah. So there was like a main conference area where like all the okay. main speakers would go. This was like their official lineup. And then yeah. there was a talent section for all of the kittens, the celebrity kittens who were in attendance. And okay. you could click the individual kittens and go into their booth. And if they were live in their booth, you could check into their video and like watch their Q&A and see what they had to say. Or, so cool. So cool. Dude, so sick. Or if you were late to the live one, all the videos were saved. So like I checked into Chunky Mr. B and I'd missed I'd missed his his meet and greet. Okay. But the video was still there and I got to like see what's up with Chunky Mr. B and his owner. Cute. And I was just like, guys, like this is like the sickest guys. moment. Guys. Oh my God. I've never been I so am excited. really happy for you. Thank you. It was such a moment for me, and I'm so glad I got to share that with you and everyone on this podcast who may not be as down for kittens as I am, but I need you to understand that I was pumped, and I appreciate you listening to how pumped I was. Yeah. Um, I think that's going to do it. We have to leave it on such a high note. I know. Um, we will be back next week. You mm -hmm. can DM us your thoughts on breakups if you have some at Almost On Air on Instagram. Our link tree is everything. Um, oh, and we are on Twitter. So you can follow Dude. us on Instagram. We're also on Twitter. Finally. And we now have an email list. So we don't necessarily know what we're going to do with that yet. <laughs> but probably like, um, like we announced last week, actually, we're going to be not hosting Carla Marie and Anthony are hosting whatever this is but we are participating in the ready to drink awards and that's on May 12th so we could send an email out for that to remind you guys to tune in can I just say I don't really know what the ready to drink awards are no but no idea all of us together just hearing the name of these awards I'm in you know yes Ready yes. to drink. it will be that that little content club that we have uh created with uh 20 somethings doing nothing we'll get a name Carla Marie and Anthony the usuals um so yeah go to at almost on air you can find everything there and like i said at the very beginning of this podcast if you would like to buy the candle that jake is selling jake and ricky are having a contest you could also buy ricky's candle with the link in my bio which is at erica shea with three a's john how do they find you you can find me at kamuchi on instagram and that's 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 gonna be it okay bye <laughs> <laughs>